Hey guys, Eddie the Magic Monk here. Welcome to another math lesson on surveying. Today we're going to just continue with finding the area of triangles. And you might think, oh well, we've already done one with the height of the triangle, base times height divided by two, and we've done one where we had to find the height of a isosceles triangle. What else could there be? Well, I'm gonna give you a quick question and see if you can do it with that formula. So as we do all of these questions, um, just imagine that you are a bird flying over a block of land and this is what the block of land looks like in a triangle shape. So obviously the surveyor would have instruments to be able to measure the length, the <clears throat> the length around around the block of land and the angle. Okay, so how will we find the area of this block of land. Now you cannot just cut it in half because these two sides are not um, <clears throat> equal which means you can't find the perpendicular height. We don't know what this height is plus we don't know what the base is anyway so um, even if you found the perpendicular height even if you use this 10 meters as the base and you try to find um, the perpendicular height, which is a bit hard to draw. Let's say that was the height from the base to the top of the triangle. You don't know how long this bit is. We don't know that, so we can't cut it up. So the way you would do that <clears throat> is, unfortunately, you have to learn a new formula. And the formula we're going to use is half times A times B times sine C and this is called the sine um, actually it's just called area of a triangle using the sine rule uh, formula so um, I'm not going to show you the proof here today because you're probably more interested in how to do it rather than the theory but I will show you the proof at the end of the video so if you're interested in the proof you can keep watching to the end otherwise um, you can just see how it's done. So the area is basically equal to half times. Now what is A and B? A and B is simply the two <coughs> numbers you're given. So the two lengths you're given which is 10 and 7. These are your A and B. Okay so you just simply put the two lengths you're given in the formula. It doesn't matter if you say 7 is A, 10 is B or 10 is A, 7 is B, they all mean the same thing. So you just go 10 times 7 times, and then you go sine. Oops, why did I write this as a C? Um, sine C, so sine 70. Now, hopefully you guys have used sine cos and 10 before if you're doing maths at this level. So now you can simply just type all of this into the calculator. So 0 0.5 times 10 times 7 times sine 70. Now the important thing to make sure is that your calculator says degrees. If it doesn't say degrees, then you're doing it with the wrong answer. So then the answer is 32.89, round it to 2 dp two decimal places, meters squared, <clears throat> 32.89 meters squared is the answer for that. Okay, um, let's do another one so you guys are sure what to do. So with these questions, you can only do them if you get the length of two sides. So let's say this is 20 meters and this is 28 meters and you have the angle in between the two sides you need this angle if the angle is not there you can't do it let's make the angle 30 degrees okay so again area equals half a b sine c so that is simply half times 28 times 20 times sine 30. And just put all that into the calculator. 
and you will get a hundred and forty meters squared. Okay, make sure your calculator says degrees. Okay, so now um, what I'm going to do is quickly show you the proof of this formula using the original um, area of a triangle formula as well as uh, some basic trigonometry. If you're not interested in the proof, feel free to skip to lesson three of this series. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a normal triangle. So this is a normal triangle where we are given the height and let's say the length at the bottom is the base. So normally the area is half times base times height. Okay, so now I'm going to label a few other things. Okay, I'm going to label this side as A and this side as C. This side as A, this side as C, and I'm going to label this angle here, I'm going to label that angle as capital C. Capital C. Okay, so what am I doing with these extra three things? And that is because I want a way for us to um, relate this angle. I want us <clears throat> to rate, relate this angle and the height. I want a relationship between C and H. Notice I put capital C because it's the angle. I want to find out a relationship between this angle and this height because if you notice in the question we're given the angle which we can say is C but we're not given the height. So how will we find the height um, if we're given C? Okay then we need to use uh, in trigonometry if you guys remember we got the sine ratio is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So in this right angle triangle right here this right angle triangle, because we have a right angle down here, this side would be the opposite side to the angle, and this side would be the hypotenuse. So substituting that into the formula, I then have sine C, because the angle is called C, equals opposite, which in this case is the height of the triangle, over the <coughs> hypotenuse, which is A. Now, I know you're thinking, why am I using these symbols? Like, this H, this H, they're the same. They're, sorry, they're totally different. So let me just use a different color for this H, because otherwise... So the opposite side is H. Let me just color that in with this color, H. And the hypotenuse is A. So... So, yep, so now I have this little um, formula, and then I can simply rearrange it to make H the subject. If I want to make H the subject, I'd simply multiply both sides by A, and that will cancel out the A's because divided by A times A just means times 1. So now on the left hand side, I have A times sine C. So now notice I can simply substitute this new expression we have for H into this formula and I will have half times B times A times sine C, which is exactly the same as the area of a triangle formula. Now, you probably will not be tested on the proof, I'm not sure. You, can probably ask your teacher, but normally people just want to see if you can use this formula. So if you understood the first part of the lesson, um, you should be fine. Okay, let's keep going. Thanks for watching. See you next time.